Is space the future of the Internet of Things? Welcome to Tech First with John Gutzier. Starlink just launched its expanded beta as an ISP or Internet Service Provider in the sky, but IoT or Internet of Things is a different kettle of fish, of course. Australia-based Miriata says it has the world's first low-power, ultra-low-cost global IoT solution. To get all the details, we're chatting with Steve Winnell, who's the VP of Engineering at Miriata. Welcome, Steve. Hi, John. Great to be here. Excellent. Good to have you. You're halfway around the world. You are in Adelaide, Australia right now. I am in Vancouver, Canada. Super pumped that we are chatting through the miracle of technology. But you have some very interesting technology, and it's in space. Space is super hot right now, but why are you doing IoT from space? We're excited to bring this new technology uh, to the world. So basically what we have is a affordable, long battery life, high uh, data rate security, high security system that uh, enables customers, whether they're on land, earth or sea. Interesting. So you're doing that from space because you're reaching out to, obviously in the sea, at, at sea, there's, there's no cell, cellular networks and you're also doing spaces on earth that are very remote, I assume? That's right, John. So existing systems are plagued with things like low battery life or insecure data transmission or uh, the inability to work in everywhere. So uh, out at sea, in remote areas, in cities, with the patented uh, direct to orbit technology that Miriota has developed, we're disrupting the IoT uh, technology ecosystem by providing this, this high uh, performance uh, solution for everyone. Cool. So traditional satellite orbits are quite high up, right? Um, you, and you look at Starlink, that's low Earth orbit. That's 500 kilometers, about 300 miles or something like that. Where are your satellites? Yeah, good question, John. So we're, we're up around the 500 mile mark and our uh, satellites are the order of about 22 pounds. So quite tiny. Those are micro satellites. That's absolutely tiny. That's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool technology. What that enables us to do is be able to beam uh, data from modules anywhere around the world up to the satellite and then down to the cloud so that you can get uh, data from the modules anywhere by your internet browser. Interesting. So this is a satellite that you could carry in your hands. <laughs> this is not oh, a yeah, that's satellite. Right. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Wow. Uh, what kind of capability does it have? So it has the capability with our direct to orbit technology of being able to provide end users with an ability to send data securely and with battery life measured in years uh, to the cloud so that they're able to um, produce a great connection back from the module anywhere that is to their data center. Mm -hmm. For the satellite itself, uh, who's your launch partner? How have you gotten them up to space? Yeah, we, uh, we tend to use a ride share technology. So as our growth uh, plans continue through our 2021, we'll be continuing our, our launch uh, program. So you use multiple partners for that? That's right, yes. Okay, interesting. And I, I, I'm, I'm curious, I don't know if you have the answer here, but I know it's been traditionally extremely expensive to get satellites in space, get anything in space on the order of, I, I, you know, $10,000 a pound, I think at one point with the space shuttle, maybe perhaps more. How much does it cost to get one of these Miriota uh, satellites, IoT satellites into space? Well, that's one of the big drivers for us is being able to provide affordable data to the rest of the world. So one of the things underpinning that is the low launch cost. New Space has been able to provide us with a very low launch uh, cost capability, and then we can pass that on to the end user. Is that fits on a credit card type of uh, is, uh, cost to launch, or is it a little bit more than that? <laughs> it depends on the size of the <laughs> credit card, I guess, John. Maybe not my <laughs> credit card. Maybe Bill Gates' credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a black one, but certainly the modules are the size of a credit card. Okay, okay, interesting. Well, let's talk about some of the use cases then. Um, what, what are some of the common use cases that people uh, do IoT by satellite with? Yeah, great question, John. Imagine you're a farmer 
and you have to travel each day 90 miles to check the water level in a water tank. We're disrupting that technology with technology at the moment so that the farmer is able to check the water level on his or her browser so they don't have to go drive all that way and then that's going to really revolutionise things like farm management and water resource management in the future. That's just mm-hmm. one of the examples that we're uh, we're working on with our end users. Would you put it on your ship? Would you put it? You've got a use case um, uh, uh, that you talk about in terms of wind farms, and you talk about saving a wind farm something like an, a huge number, like half a billion dollars a year. Uh, how, what, what's that look like? How's that work? And how 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 are you accomplishing that? So wind farms generate a lot of electricity, but they're typically in remote areas away from from urban areas. So we've partnered with Ping to provide a way of measuring the performance of the wind farm turbines and also make sure that the maintenance costs are low. So an operator can then see if their wind farm uh, turbine needs to be replaced or or repaired. This amounts to huge savings because each uh, wind farm tower is about the order of three to five million in cost and a repair can be up to 300k each time. Mm-hmm. So not to mention having to travel out to check, decommission the, the wind farm tower. So what we've been able to do with Ping is uh, remotely measure and provide that data and insight to the operators, saving them time and a lot of money. Interesting. Uh, tell me, what, was, what are one or two of the most unusual use cases that you've seen so far? Well, at the moment, we're... Uh, partnering with uh, people who can provide huge opportunity and impact. But some of the conversations we've had in the past have been things like measuring ocean currents, so measuring temperatures and ocean currents have in the middle of the ocean, and tracking things like turtle migration or even rhinos in Africa. Oh, wow. Interesting. Uh, would a rhino have its own Miriota little transmitter? Yeah, that's right. The, uh, the data costs and module costs are so affordable that I uh, think each one would be able to have their own uh, special module. Wow. Uh, so let's say that I, I have a Rhino. Uh, I don't. But let's say I have a <laughs> Rhino and I want to get a Myriata module on the Rhino so I can make sure that it's safe, protected, nobody's going to steal the horn, grind it up for aphrodisiac, whatever. How much does it cost for me to get a module and put it on there for a year? Well, that's a really exciting uh, part of our technology. Because we've scaled it out and it just works, it's the equivalent of a Raspberry Pi for IoT. So you can just get one of these uh, modules off the off the website, and then you're up and running in a few hours, getting data from anywhere, Earth, land, and sea, out to your browser. So wh- put a number on it. Uh, how much am I talking about? It's it's relatively cheap. So hundreds of dollars. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. And you're very developer friendly, right? I mean, you've got a whole developer platform. Uh, people are working on different solutions all the time, incorporating the technology. That's right. So we make it an effort to make it as easy as possible for uh, people developing with this technology, both by having a partner network, but then also providing a number of development tools and information to, uh, to customers making their journey as easy as possible. Okay. So let's assume I'm the the farmer and I've got a, a well that's um, 90 kilometers, 90 miles away, whatever it is, um, and I put one of the Mariota solutions on it. Um, how long can I just leave it there and not think about it? How long do the batteries last? Well, this is a big game changer for us. Existing uh, systems are plagued with low battery life and poor privacy and security. With the Miriota module, we're disrupting that. We've spent a lot of time uh, developing patented technology in the area of battery life. So for some of these applications, you're talking years, up to 10 years, even more with the uh, the technology. That results in huge savings for people like a farmer who don't have to worry about the uh, the module that's set and forget. Wow. Like a decade. Incredible. Um, So you currently have three satellites in operation, correct? Uh, we're rolling out satellites as we speak, so uh, it's pretty exciting as our growth plans continue. We're uh, moving into the US in 2021, and along with that is an increase in the number of launches that we're going to 
undertake. Okay. So what is the number? What's the number of satellites? Yes. Yeah. So as uh, as we continue, we grow more and more. Okay. <laughs> you are very non-specific for numbers for a VP of engineering. Uh, I hope that your calculations are more specific when you're calculating weight and thrust and all those sorts of things. Wow. Um, I believe I read on your website that it was three right now. And so... I'm guessing that since you're in Australia, you're covering the Southern Hemisphere uh, with that pretty well, and you've got line of sight or whatever, you know, for maybe three, four times a day, maybe more than that for individual installations so they can squirt up a few kilobytes, 20, 40, 100 kilobytes of data. I'm fine, I'm fine, or there's a problem, those sorts of things. And as you add more, then you'll be global and be able to do the Northern Hemisphere. Is that correct? Actually, John, yeah, that's a really interesting part of these uh, satellites because they have what's called a polar orbit. They traverse the world every one and a half hours. So we have uh, the ability to have global coverage with these uh, satellites at the moment. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Excellent. Well, what was the date on that that you plan to expand to uh, the Northern Hemisphere or to the United States? Yeah, it's not that long uh, to go now. We're looking forward to our launch in uh, in the US and expansion of, of the market next year. Excellent, excellent. Well, Steve, thank you for joining. Appreciate your time. Very interesting project. Thanks, John. My pleasure and great to talk with you today. Absolutely. For everybody else, thank you for joining us on Tech First. My name is John Katsir. Appreciate you being along for the show. You'll be able to get a full transcript of this in about a week or maybe three days at johncoutsier.com. The story comes out at Forbes just after that. And the full video is always available on my YouTube channel. Thank you for joining. Maybe share with a friend. Until next time, this is John Coutsier with Tech First.